Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am Carrie the Mortician, and this is Coffee with Carrie. And I'm not having coffee since it's in the afternoon. Um, but this is where you can ask me, a funeral director, mortician, embalmer, undertaker, whatever you want to call me, <laughs> any question live, and I will answer it for you. Usually, I have like a stack of questions that everybody sent me, and this last round. I have not really gotten many. So hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, but so I'm going to totally be going from what you are asking me. So make sure you drop questions in the chat as we're chatting live. So um, the first question or thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was earn warranties. So this is right from a Batesville company, earn. Um, and so specifically people are like, why does a vault have a warranty? Why does a casket have a warranty? Why does an urn have a warranty? Well, this isn't so that, you know, if it, you drop it and it breaks that it's covered to like take care of your loved one inside or anything. This is if like, so there's disclaimer, like Batesville will not be responsible for any consequential, emotional, incidental, special and or indirect damages arising out of any breach of this express warranty. If you buy it, the urn from somebody that's not an authorized or licensed funeral director, the warranty is void. So there's all these different things with the warranty. Um, it basically ensures that the urn is free from defects in material and works workmanship. So if a knob falls off or one of the feet on the bottom of some of them, you know, like the, they have little feet on the bottom, if those fall off or the hinge is broken or doesn't, it doesn't lock correctly. Those are things covered by a warranty, just like a car. You know, if you go up and you run your car into a tree, they, they're not, that's not covered under a warranty. Same with this. You drop it, it's not covered under a warranty. But if there's any manufactured, manufacturer defects, this is what covers it. So it's pretty simple. We'll talk about caskets and vaults another day when it comes to that stuff. So happy Thanksgiving week. Yay. I love Thanksgiving. I love because it's then rolling into Christmas and I love Christmas. So I do love this week. I'm making stuffing. My family have come to love my stuffing and I'm also making a dessert. I'm going to make like an apple slab cake thing. Um, so that's what I'm making. What do you guys make? What do you guys love for Thanksgiving? Tell me about your favorite Thanksgiving foods. Hello in Jonesboro, Tennessee and in Moscow. If you are extremely overweight, does it cost more to be cremated? Yes. Crematories will often charge an additional fee because you have to specialty schedule um, people over a certain weight for the cremation. And you have to monitor that cremation process very closely because of the extra flame sometimes or smoke that may start coming out of the, the stacks outside. Things that can go wrong when you have somebody who is overweight. Fat is an accelerator. <laughs> That's just plain and simple. It's a fact. And so the heavier someone it is, the more adipose, the more fat they have on their body, the more that acts as an accelerant for burning and the more that it's kind of like grease, a grease fire essentially is you're throwing more um, accelerant onto a fire as that person's body is breaking down. So it can get very dangerous for the crematory operators. Hello, Merced, California. Is that how you say Merced? Is that how you say it? I love dressing and mashed potatoes. Yum, now I'm going to get all hungry for Thanksgiving food now that you guys are talking. The local funeral home is getting sued. A casket fell into a grave from a lowering device. Body fell out. Do funeral homes and cemeteries carry insurance for these types of lawsuits? I don't think malicious, but some are about money. Uh, Leo, is that the one from two years ago? Like the incident happened two years ago and now they are suing. Um, I read someone, this was a big discussion in um, 
I think my student group, we actually talked about this because it's so far after the incident and getting brought back up and questioning that part of it and kind of the motive this far after and accidents happen, things malfunction. It doesn't mean that it's human error. Unfortunately, like it's just a bad accident if a strap gives way or the luring device malfunction and the casket falls and opens or whatever the situation may be. So yeah, I can understand that could be emotionally jarring for a family. That can be a very bad memory when you've had this beautiful service and then all of a sudden grandma's rolling out of the casket. So um, totally get that. Yes, we do carry liability insurances. And so that does help in those situations. Um, but it can't just be a blanketed lawsuit because something happened. They have to, I think, prove like distress and, you know, mental anguish and all these things. So it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. How did you master lifting vessels? I don't think you can ever master it because everybody is so different you find your tips and your tricks. And like I talked about recently, sometimes you have to just walk away and come back because you can get really frustrated. And if the vein breaks and the area fills with blood, you are working blind in there because you can't clear anything to actually see the vessel. You have to just do it by feel. So I am someone who early on, I would look at the ceiling, I would close my eyes and I would feel my way around to understand what things felt like. Cause sometimes you are just working by, by feel. So is it common to bury cremated remains? I guess I always thought the purpose of cremation was to be able to keep the remains. Yeah. We bury a lot of cremated remains, honestly. Sweet potato casserole. Oh, all the food. I heard this is a busy season for funeral homes. Is that true? Not really. Um, no, right now we are in a huge high death spike and it has nothing to do with holidays or anything like that. It's just a crazy death spike going on right now. Hey, Kendall. I love my turkey. You guys are all talking food. Oh gosh. So a viewer sent me this book and I'm sorry for the language, guys, but this is such a fun little book, and I wish more people did this. Um, so it's called Bleep My Mama Says, and he basically chronicled all these crazy things and interactions he had with his mom, and it really makes you realize, like, old people can be super fun. They can be frustrating. They can piss you off, but you can love them because they're your loved one through all of it. Sometimes it's because of... Uh, maybe Alzheimer's or dementia or whatever the scenario is. But the things that they say can be these little tidbits that you can hold on to forever. So that's what he's done is he's kind of chronicled all these little interactions. Like every page is a different little interaction he had with his mom. And it is, it's quite a cute, like humorous book. So I'll show you guys it's called, wait, my mama says, um, and there he is. His name is Bobby. He has another book too, but I just, he sent this, he had sent this to me after we chatted for a little bit. And I, I think it's so cute. I just had it sitting here on my desk, thought I'd share. So, um, Carrie, someone told me they removed the brain from the skull and it's placed in the abdomen. They said they got this information from a mortician. True. Accurate. Yes. This is from an autopsy. The mortician does not remove the brain. We do not remove any organs from a deceased. When we receive a deceased who has had an autopsy, which does not happen every time, only in a questionable death, all of the internal organs are all taken out and they're all placed in a bag. We receive this bag of viscera is what it's called, all the internal organs. Sometime, and then we treat those to try to preserve them. Sometimes they will just place the bag back in the person. Sometimes we'll pull them all out and what's called bread. So there's a uh, formaldehyde powder or paraformaldehyde powder, and you coat basically all of the internal organs in this. Um, sometimes they say shake and bake. I know these are, you guys are getting the inside little lingo things that sometimes we say, but like shake and bake them and put them back inside. So they're all covered in this powder form. We do not put the brain back in the head. It would not do anything good to do that. Um, 
and it's often dissected and cut up. I mean, when you get the liver, livers are huge, by the way, guys, it's, it's a massive organ. Um, it's got slices in it. The intestines, I, I don't know how it all fits in there. Kind of like after you have a baby and you're like, how did this thing actually come out of me? All of these internal organs, when you look at them, you're like, hokey Pete, how are these all inside of me right now? Like it just, intestines seem to go forever. I, Anyway, I digress. But yes, the brain comes out during an autopsy and it will go in that bag in the abdomen. Holiday suicide and drunk drivers. I don't know if honestly there's more during that time. I don't know that I've ever seen a spike in those. So it's interesting. Is it true that people in the funeral industry dislike the turn remains? If so, why? We don't dislike it. We were taught in more choice school, at least I was. It's a slang term. So it's like if you go to, I'm trying to try and think of an example here. If you go to a, a mechanic, I don't know, and they're talking to you about something super casual and they're using slang terms. I'm trying to think like that. All I can think is carburetor and calling it a raider or something. I don't know. Shortening a term that is what we kind of use behind the scenes and using that with a family. I, and it's not really appropriate. You shouldn't use slang, um, which is what cremains is. Cremated remains are what they are. However, it has become more of a common term. Um, I've had family say it to me. Uh, I just recently was meeting with a family and they called it cremains. <laughs> and I don't love it, but it is, I mean, it's just slang for cremated remains. So if a family is comfortable using it, great. I, I dislike the term ashes. It's not really ashes. Um, so I don't like that term. What was your experience holding a human heart? Did it have any effect on you? Not really. Are you asking me, Leo? Yeah, not really anything. It's crazy, though, to look at these things that are non-functioning when I'm seeing them and think they run a whole body. Like, it's quite the miracle when you really step back and look at all the pieces and parts and the fact that them all working together, this all happens. Like, the miracle of birth. I mean, look at the baby and it grows. It just grows. It just happens. And... It, yeah, it's all a crazy miracle. I It's amazing if you really, really look at it. Yes, the next Victims of Crime video um, will be posted today at 6, and it'll be a live, so we can chat um, in like a, a text chat thing while it's posting, and it's about the Jonestown Massacre, and this was a requested video, and so we recorded the other day, we recorded two crime victim videos, and we recorded a beer with the boys or embalmers drinking beer or whatever you want to call it. Um, cause we haven't had one in a while. And we had, I laughed so much having one drink with the guys. It was, it was great. We needed, I needed a good laugh moment with them. Um, I have been pretty good. I've been super, super busy at the funeral home. Um, working some extra days, our whole team has been working super hard at the one funeral home I'm at, at any of the funeral homes um, that I do any work for. They've all been super busy, hardworking. Um, I've had a couple like minor anxiety attacks just because I feel super overwhelmed. And of course, right now my neighbor's gonna mow the yard. Um, and it happens. Like I am human and I can get overwhelmed and trying to get everything done. And I have such a perfectionist streak. So I want to make sure everything's perfect for every family I'm working with. And I want to give them all my best. But then sometimes I get home and there's not much left. <laughs> I've given all of my energy, all of my, you know, compassion and kindness. And then I'm grumpy or I just want to be quiet and silent. But at the end of the day, I'm still, I got to be home. I'm still got to do everything. And it's hard. It's hard living life, isn't it? Everybody hands up life can be hard. Um, I'm thankful I have some really good people around me and I've got my two little girls to kiss on and they make every day worth everything. So thank you for asking though. I have never given expert testimony, um, in a court case. I feel like I would be super 
intimidated by that kind of situation. That would be really, really intimidating. We are having a big COVID spike and deaths here. We are having another uptick and it is vaccinated and unvaccinated. And I want to say that like that's, it is, I know what numbers are out there and stuff, but it is both sides and the families, you know, are telling us this and um, it's amazing. So it's, it's quite a crazy still looking back on, you know, three years ago, no COVID and all of a sudden here we are. And it's still this huge main focus of everything. It's who, who would have thunk? Um, have you started teaching? Yet? I haven't. I need to email the school because I haven't gotten integrated yet and in, in there. I'm teaching right now. I think that all my videos are sort of teaching. So I like to think so. Um, I think what else I recorded, I went to last weekend to a crematory and did a video there. I'm in the middle of editing that one to, and getting there to get their approval so that I can put that out. It's just a tour of a more modern crematory than my initial crematory that I did a tour way back in the day when I started all of this. Um, and so it's kind of fun to see the difference and how far things have come and how much things have changed. Um, place, people want to go to the crematory more often. They want to be there. They want to see where their loved one is. They want to be part of it, a little more hands-on with some things. And so they're more welcoming, more friendly, more contemporary. It's fun. Do they decorate funeral homes for Christmas? Yes, they do. Um, I know some funeral homes who go crazy decorating, but I can't imagine not decorating a space for the holiday. It would seem odd to me. I can see where some don't do uh, Halloween and don't get into that or don't pass out candy, but I know some who pass out candy and oh my gosh, the amount of candy they buy is crazy. Was in Frankenmuth, Michigan and thought about you. Frankenmuth is such a fun town. Um, it's a Christmas kind of themed town uh, and very uh, German old school kind of stuff. It's a super fun little town. Hello from Pomeroy, Ohio. Danita, oh my gosh, down in Pomeroy. I have been to Pomeroy several times. Uh, somebody I went to mortuary school with is down there. Uh, Meigs County, which, oh, McDaniel is the name of the funeral home. I'm trying to think what, um, what town that's in. But anyway, yeah, so Pomeroy, Ohio. Isn't that down there? Isn't that? Am I completely? Isn't that the place? Woo! Carry the funeral homes here are so overbooked and are major delays for embalming cremation. Every day in Baltimore, a person is dying a day. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty crazy because everybody still wants things in a certain time frame, and so you try and accommodate that even though you are swamped and things are overrun and more and more families come in basically telling you when things are happening because they've already scheduled them with all the other participants before they even met with you. And so you try to accommodate that, but you really should be the first place people go if they want things to happen. Because if you can't have the cremation in time, if you can't get the person ready in time, if you can't get the casket in time, it doesn't work. And then it's your fault, even though you've been put in that position by a family who didn't include you in the initial conversation. So that gets that gets hard and frustrating because it's almost like we're set up to fail sometimes with families. And of course we don't want that. So, oh, uh, thank you. You guys are so sweet. You guys are from all over the place. It always amazes me when you share where you're from. Have you answered questions about Gary yet? Who is Gary? That's the question. Who is Gary? Um, let's see. What else do I have to tell you guys about? I don't have. It's amazing to me. I didn't have a lot of questions um, sent to me this last time. So I have a photo shoot this week and some new headshots. I don't know the last time I've gone had a, like a professional photographer headshot thing. So I'm kind of excited about that to do. Um, it's just fun. It's fun to go feel a little pampered and special for a hot minute and get some new photos to have for all the business stuff I do. So I'm going to do that this week. I'm doing on average 40 to 60 pet cremations a day. That's a lot. Do you do mass 
cremations, Brother D? Or is it just individual? Um, like, do you have contracts through vets where you do like groups or not? Um, the one funeral home I work with that has a crematory, they do have a pet uh, retort inside as well. How do you remove a casket from a hearse if one of the pegs are stuck and do not release? Oh, I would lift up and over the peg is what I would probably say to do. Hello, Four Corners Custom. Four Corners Custom what? They're like, cuts off your name. Do you ever come to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? I do. I was there earlier this year, actually, um, because I'm going to um, do some work with PIMS, the Pittsburgh Mortuary School. So are you allowed to bury your pet ashes with your ashes and put them in the niche with you? It depends on the state, if you can commingle or not humans and pets in the cemetery. Private cremation or communal or group cremation. Okay, so you have all the options. That's I know I know some pet crematories that don't do any of the communal. They don't have contracts with vets. It's just an individual basis. They don't want to be quite as busy with the pet side of things. So they've they've decided to do that. I hope that that lawnmower is not too loud, guys. There is two Anderson McDaniel funeral homes in Meigs County, one in Pomeroy and one in Racine. Yep. So Adam McDaniel and I went to mortuary school together. So um, okay, shout out to Adam. So I've been down there. I've, I've hunted down in Meigs County, down in, um, not in Pomeroy. What's the, uh, there's another little town up where he was from, from Pomeroy. Uh, but yeah, I've been down there. I've been at both funeral homes and stuff. So Four custom, four corners custom caskets. Yeah, I can't see the whole name. Okay, so you do home removals of pets, and it's amazing what people spend on pets to take care of them after they die. What's amazing too, and you can add to this, Brother D, uh, the animals that people bring for cremation, like birds. Bo bird bones are so small. And so when you cremate, there's really not much there, but people expect that you're going to get something back. So you have to like, you know, burn really low so that you can try and have some cremated remains to give back to them. It's kind of like an infant, like a baby baby, like a small gestation baby. The bones are so small. There's hardly any there. You're not going to get really left with much cremated remains. But people want them and they hope that you're going to give them something back. Can you do all funerals as early as eight? You can. Um, I had some people who have done really early visitations too because the person was third shift and they wanted to accommodate all of the coworkers. So we did like an eight to 10 a.m. visitation for those people as they're getting out of work and stuff or going into work different shifts and different times and things. And um, they did like donuts and coffee out at the visitation. It was kind of fun. I like when things are different. I'm a big fan of mixing it up a little. Thank you, Kendall. Have I prepared someone in a wedding dress? I did have one person and they asked if she could be buried in her wedding dress and we couldn't do it because she had an autopsy and it was like a strapless wedding dress and it, the incisions were too much um, and just didn't, it didn't work. Um, but I, I think that's the only time is that one time. Thank you, Lisa, for asking. No, my P.O. box has changed. Um, it was too hard to get to the other one still, so I have a new P.O. box. I don't know where I put that information if I need to go update it somewhere for people to find it. Um, it's P.O. box 64 in Plainwell, Michigan, 49080. So that's where my new box is. Four Corners Custom Products in Mobile, Alabama. Alabama is a state I've never been to, ever, ever. How does a person donate their bodies to science? I have no family. You need to get pre-registered. So find the school you want to donate to or find multiple and get pre-registered. There are some that will not take you unless you're pre-registered and pre-accepted. And you may not be viable. There are conditions and there's certain things that make you non-donatable, if that's a word. Have you ever had a strange request as it pertains to embalming? I, have not, I had a friend recently to share with me that he was asked to put a shot of whiskey in the embalming machine because the person loved this whiskey. 
Um, so we did. Have you ever had, do you have any coffee, tea, what kind? I, I don't. I have actually, it's LaCroix water. That's what I'm drinking right now. This is really fly by the seat of my pants. Um, I just did a little interview with somebody I'm going to be doing. Have you guys ever heard of, let me tell you the name of this. Hashtag our stories. Do you guys know this? It's on uh, Instagram. I don't know. I'm going to be doing a video for them. So we just did like a little thing. And then I realized I haven't done a live coffee chat in like two weeks. I've been slacking. So you guys should yell at me and tell me to get doing more here. Can you put multiple cremated loved ones in one casket to be buried together? Yes, you can, Kathy. I showed a cremator operator and one time they had a pet lamb that came in. My mom is excellent. Thank you for asking. How far away am I from Muskegon? Mm, like an hour, maybe. It's all pretty much highway, so it's about an hour from me. Are you in Muskegon, Caleb? Carrie, to donate your bodies, is there a list you join prior to when you die? Yes, you need to get registered with the school. My family is doing great. You guys are all so sweet asking how I, like, personally am and stuff. You guys are, like, that's really awesome. Caleb, did you ask? me something, Caleb, that I'm missing. Can you put more than one person's cremains in one urn? That's a great question, Janae, because there's no, you can, there's no yes or no that you can say to that when it's a single urn, because you don't know how much cremated remains a person is going to yield. They could be four to 10 cups of cremated remains and you have no idea. And it's not based on Oh, he was six, seven and 400 pounds and she's like five, 10 and 180. So he's going to have more. It's not always the case. It can depend on what kind of, um, how cremated down they are, the heat that they're burned at, um, or cremated at, it, it can depend on a lot of factors. So, you can't really tell until you have both people together if they can fit in one. There are companion urns that are meant for two people and they're spaced for two people specifically. But until you have somebody cremated, you really don't know if they can fit in, in one. You're in Kentwood. That's so fun. You're Stephanie, I forget you're like 20 minutes from me. It's just crazy. Yes, I am divorced. If you want to be composted and they aren't required to follow your will, what can I do? So it just depends on your state. You can request it for yourself in certain states. Michigan, Michigan is just not one of those states because you physically have to sign for yourself in that moment and you can't sign ahead of your own death. So you can't sign for yourself your loved ones have to sign for you, but you can designate somebody who you know will carry it out in this state. You have to have that paperwork done ahead to designate that person though. So check with the laws of your state. Hey, JW. Don't make me cry. Oh, I don't I'm divorced guys. I'm fine. I've been divorced for a little while now and life is good. Life is very good. Don't, there's no crying. Could you say your PO box again? Yeah, you can write me by all means. I love, I love, I have received some of the most insanely amazing gifts from you guys. Um, I have one guy and he makes me pens, like super cool, amazing pens. Um, I think I've gotten like four or five from him by now or at this point. So uh, it's PO box 64. And it's in Plainwell, P-L-A-I-N-W-E-L-L, -L, Michigan, which is M-I. It's 49080. Don't send hate mail. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but no, I've gotten some, I get, I've gotten coffee, lots of coffee mugs and coffee and things like that. Lots of treats. One lady recently, um, somebody sent me all sorts of treats and I, you guys have been, you have blessed me more than you, you could even know. How is a composted remains process to be so? 
easier answer is to go watch the videos. I don't have a video on composting yet um, because it's nowhere near me. We don't have it at all. So it's a very foreign thing to me still. Go watch some of the videos on composting because there are some. Oh, Danielle, drive careful when you drive down to Texas. I want to go to Texas. Of course I'll accept postcards. Joyce, I'm so sorry. Your brother died last week. That's so sad. I told JW. So JW is a, um, a guy who was a viewer. And when I went to St. Louis last year to do some videos down there, we met in person and he's now a good friend of mine. Um, and some of you are like, who is this JW guy that you're always shouting out? Because when I see him on here, I like to say hi to him. Um, and I told him the other day, I was like, man, I didn't get a St. Louis hoodie when I was in St. Louis. And I have such a crazy amount of people from St. Louis that watch my videos. I still haven't figured out why St. Louis I'm a hit in St. Louis and, you know, this little grouping of population. I don't know. Um, but it is amazing how many people in St. Louis. So I told him I needed a hoodie. So he's been on a hunt for me for a hoodie for Christmas from St. Louis. Yay. Blake, I would love to come down to Texas. Can you explain the differences between a beer and a casket? So a beer is what the casket sits on. I have a two minute video on a beer. And it's B-I-E-R. And it's the device that has wheels, moves around that the casket sits on at a viewing. Did you wear braces as a child? That's the most random question, Lisa. And I did uh, for like seven months. It was just a short period of time. And I still have a permanent retainer in that I've had in my whole life. And the dentist is always like, man, I usually don't stay in that long and don't have problems with them. But I just have had it in such a random question. Danielle, let's find Gary a new man. <laughs> now that's a hashtag I didn't know would be a thing. That must have been you troublemaking puppies, pups. Oh, I have no idea what that means. Are the beers that do, are there beers that do not move? Um, not really. Yeah, there's some where it's more like a stand, but a Beer is meant to move around so that you can move the casket. I know, guys, there's a lot of traveling I want to do. Everybody wants me to come visit them. <laughs> and I want to go everywhere. I want to explore and I want to go places and, and see things. And my aunt had dentures and was cremated. Would they have kept the dentures in for cremation? We do not go in and pull out. Well, somebody might somewhere. I'm not going to say never. Um, but no, I do not go in and take out dentures if they're in the person's mouth. A lot of times people have removed dentures for when they die. Um, they just don't have them in. Um, so we don't really have to have to remove them. How tall are caskets? Now you're challenging me. The standard casket. I feel like it's like 70 inches standard casket length. See, I'm just like you guys, I'm going to Google 84 inches long and 28 inches wide and 23 inches tall. 84 by 28 by 23 is a standard casket. So says the Google. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where am I off to next? Do I have any travel plans? I don't think I have any plans for travel yet. I really, 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 really want to go out and do a video at the first crematory in America and it's out east. Um, so I would love to line that up before too much snow flies. So we'll see. Maybe I'll work on that tomorrow. Um, seeing if they're around. Yeah, I would love to go to the Caribbean. So I do have, that is a good question, Ty. Um, I did get my bookshelf casket kit. It is sitting literally in the entrance, um, the entrance to my house. And it's a big ginormous box just sitting on the floor that I step over all the time. I have to find a time and like a helper or something to help me have the video while I'm putting this thing together. And if you guys want me to do it live, I'm going to have to do it live. I don't know how entertaining it's going to be, but I might have to have a glass of Josh while I'm while I'm putting this thing together, but, um, I need to just find a day to do it. So it could be quite entertaining. It's actually in two boxes. It's one huge box and then one smaller box. So 
part of me wants to not even open the boxes until the video like starts so you can see exactly, but I don't know if I'm going to have the right tools and stuff. So I kind of want to get out that sheet that says like what tools I need. So I'm ready, but I do have it. Um, it came was it last week or the week before, right at the end of the week before maybe, but yeah. What size hoodie do I wear? Um, medium. I wear medium shirts, but you know, sometimes larges depends on the size. So hoodies are fun. Why would a family not be allowed to tuck their loved one in? My friend asked to help and she was told it wouldn't be appropriate. So some funeral directors are very uncomfortable doing that with families. And so they tell the people they're not allowed to stay. It's nothing is happening that they can't see or shouldn't be. I am one of those people and I will tell every funeral director this, if you're doing something that you feel needs to happen behind closed doors, then what is inappropriate about what possibly what you're doing? You know, everything that I do, I, there's things that I don't feel like I would want you to see because of like, you don't need to see me wiping poop off your loved one's butt because they defecated after death, you know, things like that. But if I'm talking in your loved one, I feel like you should be part of that too, or should be allowed to be part of that. Um, I think it takes that mystery or that question, like, what are they doing? That's naughty. If they're not allowing me to be there in a moment that should be open to whoever wants to be there. So yeah, it's interesting. If you have a service with cremated remains, does the funeral home have to transport them? No, you can transport them. In some states, so if you are burying cremated remains, a funeral director does have to be there, just like with a casketed burial. Michigan is not one of those. Like a family can take the loved one to the cemetery and bury them if they want. You just have to have the permit. A live video would be fun. We'd love to hang out with you while you build that. Yeah, I think it would... Uh, it would challenge, it might challenge me. It could be fun. I studied, no, I did not study at Warsham. I just got, when I visited Warsham, I got these sweatshirts. I got my blue one first. And then the last time I was there, I got a gray one. They're the comfiest sweatshirts. And I have no idea what they have done to them to make them so cozy, but I love my Warsham sweatshirts. I studied in Cincinnati. So I went to Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science. Let's see. I'm going to do just a couple more little questions, guys. But thank you for the support. You guys are so sweet. You're so encouraging and so supportive. And it makes me want to just push and keep doing videos and do more and do better. And I love it. Love it. Love it. Right now, I have all my two-minute videos already uploaded and scheduled into January. So I kind of got ahead, uh, which is always a good feeling. And come January, we're going to change our music on the two-minute videos. I've done that the last couple years, and I'll do a contest of some sort that you can get entered into, and then we randomly draw the winner, and that person gets to pick the new song for the two-minute videos. And since every Tuesday you hear that music, it's like 52 weeks of the same song. So it's kind of fun to have somebody get to get to pick it. So watch for that contest coming up. Um I'll have to look and see. I don't remember how we picked it last year, how I, um, I know Desiree was the winner, but I can't think of how we picked it. I'll have to go back and look, come up with a contest for this year. So yeah, Larry, you got to see your sister tucked in, right? Nothing special. I mean, it's a special moment and it's nice to be there and see them for that literal last time before that casket closes. Um, it's pretty cool. Josie, you know, <laughs> she says, uh, you got your videos into January. Meanwhile, I have a clean laundry pile that's mocking me. For reals, I worked really hard to get those two minutes up so that I wasn't having an ulcer over missing one. Like I have gone two years now not missing a Tuesday and I get super stressed if I don't have some like built up and I actually got to a day where it was like a Sunday and I had no videos, nothing. Sometimes I'll have lots of content and it's all laid out for a while. And then all of a sudden I'll have nothing. And so I get super stressed because I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do a video on? And it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to just pull some stupid topic out of my booty that I'm going to do a two minute on. But um, yeah, so it's nice to have those lined up. 
I, we're not saying that other areas of my life are not pure chaos and undoneness because that's the truth. <laughs> it, it really is. So. Oh, Tracy, guys, last night sucked. I was first at a fire. Oh, was there, I hope there wasn't any death, but it sounds like maybe there was. Have I ever done a crowning? I have not. I don't know anywhere around here that that does that. I would like to go watch one, have some training on it, talk it through and things. So I need to find somebody that does it. And I also want to do the choreographed kind of pallbearers that do the dancing down the the aisle and they do their, their little thing. I reached out to one group maybe a year and a half, two years ago and emailed them and I never heard back. There's a lot of places I email and I never hear back. Either I go to their spam maybe, or they just are not interested in doing a video. So you never know, but well, thank you guys. Um, have a really amazing week. Uh, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, have a great time. Enjoy who you're with. Some of this, you may be experiencing the holidays for the first time without a special loved one that has passed in the last year, or maybe you've gone through a relationship breakup, things like that, that, you know, I'm you know totally about, um, but you can do it. And we're here with you. We're thinking about you. You're not alone. You may feel alone because by golly, I have moments and days where I still feel alone from different things. You know, we all have that feeling on days, even when we're surrounded by people, but we're here and we love you guys. So keep questions coming, email them to me and yeah, feel free. Send me a postcard or something. I love getting, I love getting mail. It's mail is so fun. So I will talk to you soon and I'll see you guys in two hours. Join me for the premiere of the victims of crime, where we chat about the Jones town massacre. Bye.